trigonometric revision exercises involving mainly compound angles and double angle formula. The idea of this exercise is that you do it yourself. So you try each screen before you look at the solutions. The solutions follow each screen. If you need some help, then certainly play the video on a bit if you need guidance, add, but then still try it yourself and if you do use the guidance in the video then a good idea is to retry that question the next day. Let's look at this first one. Show that the value of the following expression is independent of the value of A. Now that's pretty daunting except that you must not be in the habit of looking, trying to see the end result. Because if you try to see the end result, you'll be put off. I mean, scientists start trying to do something and they don't know how they're going to end up being able to do it. But they have to start somewhere. So they go in what they hope is the right direction. Then hope. It's always like gambling. Well, maybe informed gambling. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to simplify that. Now, don't make the error that sum will, that sine of a plus 40, oh, let's expand sine a cos 40 plus cos a sine 40, because you'd have to expand, 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 multiply out, multiply out, combine, and it's going to be one terrible mess. Rather, look with a wider eye and see sine cos minus cos sine, oh, that's a pattern. A plus 40, A plus 40, A plus 30, A plus 30. That is the sine expansion formula. So there we are. Now I'm going to hope that to prove independent of the value of A, that A goes. So take away the brackets. Yes, look, A minus A. I'm excited. There we are. Sine of 10 degrees, independent of the value of A. Proven. Let's look at this next one. This is the case of whittling down to x, getting rid of the 7, the sine, the 30, and the 2. What do we do first? The one adding. The 2 goes to that side, negative 2. Then we divide by 7. So we get negative 2 sevenths. There we are. Now remember, I keep saying that sine, cos, and tan are very selfish. They will not let go of the angle, so don't think you can get rid of that 30 that easily. Unless you try a compound angle formula, but that'll just cause complications here. So eliminate the sign first and solve for x minus 30 with full general solution. Now these being revision exercises, I'm not going to go into the full steps behind the general solution every time because you've done that plenty of times, hopefully. But we will say sign is negative, so third and fourth quadrants, 180 plus, 360 minus. We'll find the key angle by not entering the negative. We'll say shift sign two sevenths, and we'll put plus K360, K element of Z. There we are. Key angle turns out to be 16,6 degrees. Simplify the right hand side. Now I still have X minus 30, so I add 30 onto this side. Now notice the 30 does not add on to that because it's an unlike term and that. We add the 30 on there, we add the 30 on there. So there we are. Now this is a bit messy. It's acceptable but it's a bit messy because it's over 360 degrees. So we should really write that. Take 360 off it and write the actual, the acute angle. There we are. Now we have to find the specific solution. So we find values of k that allow that to be the case. And we end up with negative 133,4. If k is negative 1, it gives it to us. If k is naught, we're too high. This one here, 14,4, if k is naught. If k is negative 1, we go too far back beyond negative 180. So there are our answers for that one. Next one, calculate the value between naught and 360 if cos 2x plus sine x equals 0. Now we cannot work with that with a cos 2x and a sine x. We're going to have to reduce that. Remember cos 2x is complicated when it's sitting with a sine x. So we're going to have to expand. One of three expansions. 
Cos squared minus sine squared with a sine. No, I don't know. 1 minus 2 sine squared with a sine. Yes, seems likely. 2 cos squared minus 1 with a sine. No. So we're going to use 1 minus 2 sine squared x. There we are. And uh, from there, change the equation into a factorizable form. Factorize. And we get sine x equal to negative half and or 1. Let's solve for sine x equals negative a half. Negative quadrants. Third and, f third and fourth, key angle, 30 degrees, if you know your special angles. So there we are. And that gives us that general solution. Now, sine of x equals 1. Well, think of the graph. The graph starts and goes up to the top, down again to the bottom, and then up. The only case it's going to hit... 1 is up at the top, which is 90 degrees, and then every 360 degrees. So there we are, 90 degrees plus K360. Now remember, we have to have a specific solution between 0 and 360. Well, it looks as if we're going to get it if all the Ks are 0. There we are. Let's have a look at the next one now. That looks like double angle formula, but I'm not even going to go there yet. I have to find the value of tan A plus 1 over tan A in terms of K. So I'm not going to try to see the end result. I'm going to simplify that first by changing to sine and cos. Sine over cos, that's 1 over sine over cos, which I can write as cos over sine. There we are, cos over sine. Find a common denominator. Aha, top line. Pythagorean identity 1. Bottom line, sine A cos A. Have a look. So there we have that. And sine A cos A is K. We've written it in terms of K. Part B. Now, have a look. Sine A plus cos A equals square root of 1 plus 2k. My hint here is because of that square root, perhaps we should find sine squared, sine squared, sine plus causal squared, and then square root. Let's do that. Look how nicely this works out. Sine plus causal squared, sine squared, plus 2 sine cos, plus cos squared. Notice the blue. 1. 2 sine cos. Well, there's sine cos, so it's 2k. Now we have that squared equals 1 plus 2k, therefore sine plus cos will be the square root, usually plus or minus, but a is acute. So therefore, there is our answer. Next question here. Prove that sine 2x plus 2 sine squared, 45 minus x equals 1. Well, let's just simplify the left-hand side. There we are. 2 sine x cos x, 2, now I put it in brackets all squared, the sine of 45 minus x, there's the expansion. Sine cos minus cos sine. Special angle, so I've written sine 45 is root 2 over 2, cos 45 is root 2 over 2. Now do you notice there's a common factor here, which I can take out. But if I take it out, it must be squared, because everything inside here is squared. So there we are, it's come out. I've left this cos minus sine all squared, but have a look here. The root 2 over 2 has come out, but it's being squared still. So that simplifies to 2 over 4. Square out the bracket. You must be so tired of seeing these ones. Look at the blue again, hey? Now, this is going to cancel down to 1. So we get to end up with that. Notice the blue is 1, and there's 2 sine cos. Now have a look at that. There we are. If we take away the brackets, we're going to cancel out our 2 sine cos. And we have it equal to the right-hand side. Now this next one, we have to show that sine squared 15 equals that. Hence, so we have to use this expression. So I say, well, how can we get sine squared 15 inside this expression? Well, look here. 
If we substitute x equals 30, then we'll have sine squared 45 minus x, which is 15. I'll have to have put 30 there as well. So there we are. There's my substitution. Now I'm going to simplify. Sine of 60 degrees, there we are. 2 sine squared 15 degrees equals 1. Now I'm going to solve for sine squared 15 degrees. 2 sine squared 15 degrees equals 1 minus root 3 over 2. That's the special angle value of sine 60. Common denominator, 2 minus root 3 over 2. Now I just need to get rid of the 2 so I can go underneath multiplying with that. And it gives us 2 minus root 3 over 4. Proven. Let's look at the next question. P and Q both acute. Solve for P and Q if sine P, sine Q plus minus cos P, cos Q equals a half, and sine of P minus Q equals a half. Now we're finding two variables, so we're going to have to have simultaneous equations, which we have. We have one and the other. That one's fun. This is quite complex, but do you recognize a pattern? I don't know about sine, sine, cos, cos, but I do know about cos, cos, sine, sine. So we can take that and it jumps across to there. There we are. I've taken out a negative. Now we have cos, cos, minus sine, sine equals a half. There is your cos. Cos isn't like sine. Sine is careful with its sine, but cos isn't. So therefore that's going to be a plus. So therefore we're going to have minus cos of p plus q equals a half. Which means that p plus q equals negative a half. Now p and q are both acute. It's quite possible for cos of p plus q to be negative a half because you can add two acute angles and get into the second quadrant. So therefore, I'm going to solve for P plus Q where it's going to be a second quadrant angle where it's negative. So 180 minus cos special angle 60 degrees. So there we are. There's the one. The other one, there's sine of P minus Q equals a half, which means that P minus Q is 30 degrees. We now have our simultaneous equations. There we are. Now, the easiest way to do this is to add the two equations, because the Q's will go. So let's do that. Let's add them. We get 2P equal 150. P is 75. And it's pretty simple substituting back to find that Q is 45. Let's look at this one now. We need to prove that that equals that. Well, this is a, an identity. I'm going to take the left-hand side, and I'm going to expand it by the cos expansion. Remember, cos not careful about the signs like sinus, so therefore that's negative there. Special angles, root 2 over 2. Now. This is over root 2 alone, so you need to remember that root 2 over 2 is the same as 1 over root 2. So therefore, I'm going to write cos a times 1 over root 2 minus sin a times 1 over root 2. Well, that means they're over there. Common denominator, right hand side. Hence, solve for a if cos a plus sin a equals 1 over root 2. Well, Let's start with cos A minus sin A equals that which we have, and then solve it for cos A minus sin A. In other words, we're going to write cos A minus sin A over root 2 equals cos of A plus 45, what we've just proven, multiply up by the root 2, like that. Now, from there. We've now been told cos A minus sine A is 1 over root 2. So therefore we could say root 2 cos A plus 45 is equal to 1 over root 2. Divide by the root 2 and root 2 times root 2 gives you 2. Now we're going to go for a 
not a general solution because in fact it's acute angle so pretty straightforward cos of what is a half cos of 60 degrees therefore a plus 45 60 a is 15 degrees next question oh, I'm pretty relaxed about that one hey take the left hand side hope it comes out as the right there we are, left hand side, root 3. Now we're going to expand sine cos plus cos sine minus sine cos plus cos sine. Cos 60, half, sine 60, root 3 over 2. Cos 30, root 3 over 2. Sine 30, half. There we are. Now I can multiply in. Root 3 times this will give you a root 3 over 2 there. Root 3 times this will give you a 3 over 2. So we end up with that. I have a look here. These two eliminate. They're the same, so they subtract. Now this is one and a half minus a half of cos x, which gives you cos x, which is the right hand side. Number nine. Prove one plus sine two b equals sine b plus cos b. So, the right hand side is squaring out. So, this is one of the few cases where I'm going to take the right hand side first, even though the left hand side has double angle. You must have recognized immediately that one. We have seen it so many times through these videos. Notice the blue one and have a look. 2 sin b cos b is sin 2b equals left hand side. B. Well, have a look. We're going to go the other way. There's 2 sine A cos A minus 1. Well, first I'm going to write 1 minus 2 sine A cos A. So I have a plus 1 there. That 1 is going to go the other way, like those blues went that way. There we are. The top line now is a quadratic trinomial. It's a square which factorizes to sine minus cos all squared. Cancelling, we get minus sine minus cos. Take away the brackets and it's cos minus sine, which is the left hand side. Cos theta equals 2 sine 75 sine 15. Well, I would like this to be a double angle formula, but it's not quite. But hang on. Sin, sin. We can make that cos by saying 90 minus. There we are. And there we are. 2 sin 75 cos 75. Which actually gives us sine of twice 75. Sine of 150. Which is sine of 180 minus 30. Which is sine of 30. And... Let's go to cos now because we've got cos theta equals that is sine of cos of 60. Now we have theta equals 60 and it's between negative 360 and 360. So therefore we say cos theta equals positive first and fourth quadrants 60 degrees and 360 minus 60 degrees. And we substitute values in to get between negative 360 and 360. And there are our solutions. Negative 1 there gives you a negative 300. Negative 1 there gives you a negative 60. Naught, naught gives you a 60, 360. If we look at this one, if we told 13 cos A equals 12, immediately I see, yes, this is one of those X, Y, R ones. So, if that's the case, means cos A is X over R, which is 12 over 13. Let X equal 12, R equal 13. Remember why I'm saying let? Because this could be 24, 26. Cos is a ratio. But this being the case... Y is 5. It's a 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triangle. Now I'm going to find sine of 2a. So sine of 2a is expands by the double angle formula. Slot in your values of x, y, r. There we are. Cos 2a. 
Now I already know cos of A is that. So let's not waste other time. Why don't we write cos 2A in terms of cos of A? 2 cos squared A minus 1. Because now we can just substitute 12 thirteenths in. And that gives us our answer. Number 12. Use double angle identities to prove this. Well, I'm just going to expand cos 2x. I'm going to start with cos 2x, expand in terms of cos. This one I'm going to start with cos 2x, expand in terms of sine. There we are. Now just solve for cos squared. B, I'm going to expand cos 2x in terms of sine. And I'm going to solve for sine squared. There. Number 13. Oh, I recognize this. Sine cos minus cos sine. There's the sine expansion of 5 theta, 5 theta, 20, 20. So that is sine of 5 theta minus 20 degrees equals 1. Now think of your graph. Sine is 1 at 90 degrees and then every 360 degrees. That's it. So 90 degrees plus K 360 degrees. 5 theta minus 20 equals. That means 5 theta is 110 degrees plus K 360. Adding the 20. Divide by 2. Both must be divided by 2. Now I've got to find all the possible values of K which gives me values for theta within there. That's what we get. Here's another formula here, except there's a 2 there. So, in fact, I've divided by the 2. A cos 3 theta, cos 30 minus sine 3 theta, sine 30 gives you cos of 3 theta plus 30. We're going to solve for 3 theta plus 30. Remember, cos is selfish, eliminate it. General solution, where is cos positive, first and fourth. 60 degrees, 300 degrees, plus K, 360K, element of Z. Subtract the 30 degrees. Divide by 3. And now we have to find values between negative 180 and 180 using values of K. It gives us that. Number 14. This is the last question. Determine general solution. Sine x equals 2 cos squared 15 degrees minus 1. Oh, well, there I recognize the double angle formula, remember? This is why you need to know your double angle formula. 2 cos squared x minus 1 is cos 2x. So, therefore, 2 cos squared 15 minus 1 is going to be cos of twice 15, which is cos of 30, which is root 3 over 2. So, we have sine x equals root 3 over 2. Quadrant, first and second, because it's positive. There we are. 60 degrees, sine of x, key angle 60, so 60 degrees, plus K360, 180 minus 60 degrees, plus K360. Next one, well, I have a sine already, I need to expand cos 2x, I'm going to have to use the sine squared expansion. I brought the sine x minus 2 across, arrange it in a factorizable form, factorize. Two possible answers, oh, whoops, notice that that goes, because sine can only between, be between negative 1 and 1, so we have sine x equals 1. Good old cos graph again, it's only at 1 at 90 plus k 360. There we are. Last question. Side 3x cos, cos 3x, oh yes, that's the sine expansion, eh? Hey? Sine 3x minus x equals sine, which means sine 2x equals sine. Well, now this is like those equations with where you had to solve without using calculator. If sine 2x equals x, sine 2x equals positive, so therefore first and second quadrants. There we are. So 2x equals first quadrant plus K360. 
Second quadrant, 180 minus x plus K36B. Now we're going to solve. Let's solve that one first. Here we are. X equals K360. Taking the X across, 2X minus X. There's our answer. And this one, take the X across, you get plus X. So it's 3X equals 180 plus K360. And that gives you 60 plus K120. There is another way you could have done it. Or, at this stage, I can expand to the double angle. There we are. 2 sine x cos x minus sine x equals naught. Take out the common factor. So therefore, sine is naught or cos is a half. Sine is naught at k360. And cos is a half at 60 degrees and fourth quadrant 300 degrees. So there's your answer. Now have a look. Those answers aren't the same, but are they? They are in fact. If you watched my earlier videos, when we did quadrants, you would have seen that. I said, showed how the reduction formulae could often look different, but they're not. 60 plus K360 is included with that. If K is a multiple of 3, we get 60 plus K360. 300 plus K360. Well, have a look at this. We can have K is 2, and we'll get our 300. This actually should be K180. Sign is naught at K180. Because I was looking and I was seeing 60 plus 1, 120 gives you 180. That would have given it to you. What a way to end.